Hello football fans, Chris Terrell here with RotorPros.com to review my DFS NFL breakdown for the Week 13 main slate. In this video, I'm going to be looking at a few core plays at each position that I will be using um, for cash games this week. If you want uh, more of my core plays, rankings, GPP plays, value plays, definitely uh, jump over to RotorPros.com if you're not a member yet and get your free trial. Um, three and seven day trials depending on the level of membership that you sign up for and you can come in and check all that out um, in our slack chat we've also got news updates uh, starting lineup information whole bunch of added stuff that you can get over there at rotorpros.com with that let's get started um, so first up on the matchups tab this is where I'm gonna start every week I'm kinda looking at projected points I'm looking at Vegas over unders um, I like to compare points per game between the two teams to kind of see where the offenses and defense rank. And then I start looking and breaking down uh, for quarterbacks and looking at the passing offense versus the opponent's passing defense. And this is just yards per game here. Um, for upside, when we're talking to GPPs, I like looking at the 20 plus, and that's just how many pass, com pass completions or receptions, same thing, um, of 20 plus yards, and then how many the defense is given up to. So it's kind of a big play indicator, I guess you could say. And then we've got pass percentage versus rush percentage here as well. That just kind of shows you whether a team passes or runs more. And then, of course, the rushing yards per game, opponent yards per game, offensive and defensive line rankings. Um, and then that's just overall. When we start getting into the individual positions, I will go over that a little bit as well. Um, and then fantasy points against over here to the right. So if we're looking at Philadelphia on this line here, this is Philly's playing Miami, so this would be Miami's rank against the quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, and running back. And then this would be uh, my this is the my uh, Miami versus Philly here. Uh, this would be Philly's rank versus quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs. Just so you know how to read the sheet. So with that, let's just jump right into quarterbacks here. Um, I'm going to start right at the top with Patrick Mahomes, easily the top quarterback for me on the main slate here. They're nine and a half point favorites, 54 and a half total. They're projected over 30 points. The only team projected over 30 points this week. There is a chance they may end up running it in the second half, but what we've seen before with Patrick Mahomes is that he'll just keep throwing it. Um, they'll just keep pounding the ball and, and trying to, you know, pretty much destroy teams. So I'm not really too worried about them blowing Oakland out per se um, and him sitting in the fourth quarter or anything like that. So I'm not too worried about that. The elite matchup versus the Raiders. KC ranks second in passing yards per game. Oakland's 28th. Um, KC is second in DVOA passing offense, while Oakland is 30th in DVOA versus the pass on the defensive side of things. KC is 23rd in red zone efficiency, but Oakland is 31st in red zone efficiency in terms of defense, and that is touchdowns per trip. Um, so there's a little bit of a boost there for Kansas City, who has struggled a bit scoring touchdowns in the red zone this season. Outside of the game, um, where he got injured, Mahomes is averaging 36 pass attempts, 341 passing yards per game. He's hit cash value at these prices, which is 2x on FanDuel, 3x on DK in all but one game, and that was the game he got injured. So definitely a high floor. Uh, I will be using him in GPP as well because he does have the highest upside of any quarterback on the slate, obviously. He's got 3x, 4x upside at these prices as well, and he's hit 3x on FanDuel, 4x on DK in four of eight games. So 50% of the time, he's hitting GPP value there for you as well. Next up, uh, Jameis Winston. Uh, sometimes it can be a little tough going with Jameis. He does throw a lot of interceptions, but he makes up for it because he never stops throwing the ball. <laughs> um, so it does give him a very high floor. He comes into this game with 300-plus passing yards in six straight games and eight of his last nine while averaging 41 passing attempts per game in that time. So I'll take that volume um, there as well. He has multiple touchdown passes in four of his last five, seven of his last nine games. And Jacksonville's been a bit better against the pass. They're 13th in DVOA against the pass um, versus the run. They're 32nd. But they've that has limited teams' pass and attempts overall. Those teams will just try and run against them quite a bit there. But they do... Um, Tampa Bay secondary is vulnerable, so I think it could turn into a few more points, probably hit the over. We already set at 49.5 here, so it's pretty high um, for a team like Jacksonville. Because Tampa Bay's defense isn't very good, um, we could definitely see a high-scoring game here. We could see Jameis easily hit that 40-plus pass attempt. So what I like about Jameis a little more than my next option here, which is Sam Darnold, he is a little bit more expensive, but not by a whole lot. He's actually the same price on FanDuel. Um, $200 more on DraftKings. 
He's going to throw more interceptions than Darnold, obviously. But like I said, the, the total is a little bit higher here, about 10 points higher. In fact, um, we got Tampa Bay is projected for about three or four more points. And uh, the thing with Jameis is he's got Godwin and Evans, two elite wide receivers. I believe they're two of the top five wide receivers in fantasy football this season that he can throw to as well. Um, pretty good tight end in Brait, who he has a good connection with there as well. Up next, we've got Sam Darnold. If you want to go a little bit cheaper, um, maybe you're not into the interceptions. Uh, don't feel the safety there with Winston. Sam Darnold makes sense going up against Cincinnati. Another mid-tier option. Since being shut down by New England and Jacksonville in Week 7 and 8, Darnold has been a lot better, averaging 32 pass attempts, 274 passing yards, and he has 8 touchdowns over his last 4 games. Good for an average of 20.7 DK, 22.5 FanDuel points per game. Matchup. Yes, the matchups against the Dolphins, Giants, Redskins, and Raiders have all been cakewalks for him um, as they all rank outside the top 20 in DVOA against the pass. Great news, though, the Bengals rank 31st in DVOA against the pass, so it's another great matchup for him, um, and he's been really using uh, Crowder, and he's got Bell there as well as a good catching running back as a kind of a safety valve, so you, do, you may not get that big upside um, with him. He does hit that with Robbie Anderson every once in a while, but the consistency is there as he's got those short short to intermediate routes covered with those those guys. Crowder's been very good um, as well as Bell in the backfield there. So those are the three quarterbacks I'm looking at. I'm going to move on to wide receivers next. Um, the reason I'm going with a more of a mid-tier approach here, as you can see on the sheet, is simply because I really want to pay off for Christian McCaffrey this week. The price is up there. But I believe his ownership, just like last week, is going to be low again. So this is kind of where I'm going at wide receiver is the is the mid-tier range. I'm going to start with Robert Woods, who is my favorite points per dollar play in cash games, especially on, on DraftKings. Uh, he's 7100 The price has come up quite a bit on FanDuel. But on DraftKings at 5500 I'm definitely in on him. He returned to action last week. Due to personal reasons, he caught six of a team-high nine targets for 97 yards. Um, he's been consistent with five-plus receptions and 80-plus yards in three of his last four games. Going to want a lot of exposure to this game. Third highest total on the slate against the number one and number two uh, teams in terms of pace. So we've got a fast, fast paced game here. The cards have allowed the six most receiving yards and six most fantasy points per game to wide receivers. Add into that matchup and mid range at wide receivers, just like I said, my preferred route in trying to fit uh, McCaffrey and another 6K and up uh, running back for, for cash games this week. Next up, we've got Devontae Parker. Going up against uh, Philadelphia, um, sticking with that value wide receiver theme, he's right up there in points per dollar, especially on FanDuel at 6,000. So I probably lean Woods a little more on DraftKings, Parker a little bit more on FanDuel. In the six games with Ryan, since Ryan Fitzpatrick took over as a starting quarterback, that was week seven. Parker is averaging 9.2 targets, 5.5 receptions, and 77.7 .7 yards per game. Game script almost fits the pass almost every time just because their defense has been so bad. Um, they, they throw third most of anyone in the league 64% of the time. Miami's throwing the ball, so that fits there as well. So definitely like the points per dollar value, the high floor with Devontae Parker this week. And then my third one, um, I was only going to go with two, but this just popped up today with Evan Ingram is going to be out. Golden Tate is also going to be out this week, so we're going to see probably some added usage for Slayton. Um, don't The matchup isn't that great going up against Green Bay. They're ranked number one in passing yards allowed per game, and they're seventh in fantasy points. Sorry, ninth in fantasy points against wide receivers. But New York's going to be playing from behind, and they have very few options. Um, they're going to have Barkley, Slayton, and Shepard. Those are going to be the three guys that you're going to really want to target. I think all of them are viable in cash games, but with oh sorry here just scrolling down. With Shepard not being so great, like he came back last week, he had nine targets, didn't really do a whole lot with them at all. He's actually had, you know, going and looking at his game logs here, he's had nine targets in four straight games, yet he's only topped uh, 80 yards once. He had 100 yards against Tampa Bay, so that was a cupcake matchup. Washington, he was 7 for 9 for 76. Another easy matchup. Last two weeks in some tougher matchups, 5 and 9 for 49 against Minnesota, and in Chicago last week, he was he caught 5 and 9 for only 15 yards, so he just hasn't been as consistent 
as Slayton has, so I'm definitely looking at Slayton as a cheap option here, and especially Green Bay's defense is probably going to be concentrating a lot more on Barkley and Shepard in that area. Um, so I think Slayton may get, you know, the best matchup for sure, although Green Bay is pretty deep there. But in two starts um, for Slayton here, or sorry, his last two games, he's caught 14 of 22 balls for 188 yards. So he's been productive. He's gotten the end zone twice against the Jets there four weeks ago um, or four games ago for him at Detroit. He also got in the end zone twice there. So I just, I like his floor for the price and the opportunity for him this week, although the matchup isn't that great. So moving on to the running back position, like I've talked about here, Christian McCaffrey is definitely going to be my top choice. As you can see, the price is quite a bit higher than anyone else at the running back position. He was around 5 to 8%, I believe, in cash games last week, kind of on average between DraftKings and FanDuel. I think that's going to be the case here again this week. Price didn't go up on DraftKings. It did go up on FanDuel. Um, so I really like that opportunity. I just really like, I have built cash game lineups on both sites so far um, before I've done the video just to kind of make sure that I can fit Christian McCaffrey in with the picks that I'm giving you here. I'm very comfortable with that, so that's kind of the way I'm going to go. Even at these high prices, McCaffrey has hit cash value, which I said 2x on FanDuel, 3x on DraftKings in 9 of 11 games this season, and he's been held in check those two times by Tampa Bay. They're number one in DVOA against the Rush, So and they're also division foe. So everyone else that he's faced, he's hit cash value every single week, and he also gives you upside of you know 3 to 4x, uh, 4 to 5x on the two sites there as well. Um, love the matchup against the Redskins. Um, they just give up 98 yards on 18 carries to, that's 5.4 yards per carry to Bo Scarborough. McCaffrey is a million times better than Scarborough. They've also given up the six most rushing yards, ninth most receiving yards to running backs this season. And then a little bit cheaper one. Um, you know, if we're going with McCaffrey and possibly Mahomes um, as kind of a core there, we're definitely not going to be able to fit some of the, you know, like Chubb, Henry, if he plays, Fournette, Barkley, Bell, Jacobs. They're all in great spots, but they're all, you know, in that price range where if we go that route, we're going to have to start punting a few positions, not really looking to do that. So I'm going to go down to Mark Ingram. Um, I feel he's going to have some low ownership, kind of like McCaffrey, so I'm kind of going against the grain, I guess you could say, a little bit when it comes to chalk cash game construction. Um, most people are going to see that matchup versus San Francisco and just be like, bye-bye. First of all, Baltimore is a favorite here, um, five-point favorite. They run 56% of the time, which is great. Um, it, like I said, it's, it looks like a tough matchup on paper, but consider that San Francisco has been elite against the pass, second in DVOA there, but just league average, 16th against the DVOA against the run. So I th And Baltimore, like I said, they run more than any other team at 56% of the time. Ingram in his new situation has been awesome. He's averaging a whopping 5.2 yards per carry on the season and over three yards per carry after contact. And just having Lamar Jackson in the backfield has really opened up a lot of holes for him because teams really got to almost dedicate one player to pretty much shadow uh, Lamar Jackson on every play, which takes away he's not seeing, you know, the 8-9 in the box, um, you know, unless it's like even on third and short, things like that, fourth and short they still got to pay attention to Lamar because he could still take off on some of those option plays. So I really think Mark Ingram's a great play this week at 6K on DraftKings especially, and pairs nice with Christian McCaffrey there, um, going a little bit off the chalk there. So it's kind of a hybrid cash GPP construction this week, but I just feel with those three mid-tier wide receivers that we can really load up on McCaffrey and then get down to Ingram. In some cases, depending on what value does pop up going into Sunday, we might be able to bump that Ingram play up a little bit and get up to uh, say Todd Gurley not as safe I would say that I wouldn't say the floor is it safe but the opportunity is there in that high pace game um, going up against Arizona or even Josh Jacobs if he's cleared in a great spot against Kansas City who's given up a ton of points league high points to uh, running backs but for now those are my two plays for running backs I'm going to jump in give you a couple tight ends that I'm looking at as well obviously Travis Kelsey is going to be an elite play but we can't pay up for everyone, so I'm going to kind of look to go a little bit different direction. It starts with Hunter Henry. Since week six, when he returned from injury, he's averaging 8.2 targets per game, which is second to only Zach Ertz at nine targets per game. And he's been very productive with those targets as well, catching 71% of them for an average of 71 yards per game, plus matchup against the Broncos, who have given up the 12th most receiving yards to tight end on the season. Uh, I just see him being a high-volume guy this week, and my favorite 
points per dollar guy if you're paying out. My favorite overall points per dollar play at the tight end position is going to be Jack Doyle this week. Ebron was put on IR, um, so he's got he's going to get added opportunity. And the pricing came out before Ebron was placed on IR. Hilton is also out this week, so there's some targets to go around there in this matchup, divisional matchup against Tennessee. He's already averaging four targets per game with Ebron in. Probably going to see, you know, upwards. I could see six plus for sure. It's kind of a floor, six to eight targets, um, five to seven, somewhere in there. And I could see upside of 10 plus targets for him this week. He's not really a run after the catch type guy, more of a uh, catch and fall type guy. But with those kind of targets at his price, especially on DraftKings at 3,300, I think the opportunity is going to be there for him to at least hit cash value, which we're looking for about nine to 10 points only on DraftKings from him. If we can get 15 out of him, um, I think he makes a great play in all, all formats. I don't think we just got to reserve him to uh, cash games only. And finally, the defense that I'm looking at targeting this week, Carolina Panthers, pretty easy here. Um, they're ranked third in adjusted sack rate versus Washington, who's 30th in adjusted sack rate. 41 sacks on the season, uh, that's second most. They've also got the fifth most takeaways, so there's a high floor there, and what I'm looking for for cash games is always sacks. So I'm really, the first thing I go look at is um, the D-line versus the opponent's offensive line and try and pick that out. That easily stands out here. Like I said, so Carolina is going to be my number one, especially on Fandle where they're the fourth most expensive. They are expensive on DraftKings as well, but uh, for cash games, that's where I land. I'm not really looking at uh, punting there or anything. I can, I can definitely build a nice balanced lineup, like I said, with those mid-tier wide receivers. It can make it all work, tie it all together this week. So if you've got any questions, any players I didn't mention, questions about uh, you know, how to go about picking your contests, um, anything about constructing those lineups, where to start, how to fill in with the players, um, the ones I maybe didn't mention, hit me up in the chat. Um, go get your free trial if you're not a member yet at rotopros.com. Um, you can also hit me up on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine or on the Rotopros Twitter at Rotopros. Thanks for checking out the video and we will see you come Saturday. There's are going to be another GPP video coming out, and then Sunday morning I'll be in chat answering all the questions as we lead up to lineup lock. Uh, a lot of injury news still to come out, so tune in for that. Thanks a lot. Have a great night, everyone.